Uh, my name is Ken Fair. I'm the president of Nerdcore Entertainment. It's a Vancouver-based animation studio and IP creator. All right. Founded in 2002. Uh, we've either grown up in the video game business or online uh, or in television and really at the heart of it uh, really it's about our consumer and from the kids market perspective which is what I've been in for over 12 years now uh, kids very naturally uh, want to experience the fantasy of the properties that they love um, and so that really is at the heart of what we've always done is understanding our audience and, and what they do and the television business is, is uh, still a pretty significant business but it's changing radically kids are spending a lot more time in other places uh, but they're still watching a lot of TV and so for us the goal is to be wherever kids are experiencing our properties and if we're not then some other property is so really it's about trying to understand what they love about the characters that we create the stories the world but then looking at the different genre that um, uh, or platforms uh, that, that they do experience. So if they're watching TV, it's a sit-back experience. They just want to be entertained and veg out. Uh, once they get off the couch, they're going to go onto the computer, hopefully, and want to play the games that relate to uh, the property. So more of a casual game, possibly, or enter the world, uh, whether it be a 3D MMO uh, or a multiplayer game that they can play with their friends or a social experience within a world that we've created, hopefully. Um, and same with video games. Uh, you know, I have a nine-year-old son and I see him going back and forth from the various screens uh, very quickly. And I read very recently that kids are spending 45 hours a week in front of some screen, whether it be a video game, television, or a handheld device. And that's an insane, that's more time than they're spending at school. That's not a good thing necessarily, but uh, you know, that, that's the reality. So properties, if they can live the way they need to live on those pro uh, platforms, in en engaging ways, not just what traditionally has been done, where we would have produced the show and someone else would have produced the game for it as a license. Um, not to say a license is a bad thing, but we don't. We look at it as, you know, taking control as much as we can of the editorial of that experience because no one knows the property better than, than the creators would. One of the benefits of looking at it as I guess a brand or a property um, is that when we look at it we do look at it as a whole and so a, a TV show is nine or ten million dollars to produce uh, 26 half hours. Uh, to do the game whether it's a DS game or Wii or whatnot we're talking about budgets that sometimes are lower sometimes are much higher and, and if you do look at it uh, as the whole brand uh, it's a little bit easier to kind of justify sometimes you may lose money in one respect. I mean the web's a, a tremendous promotional tool. We're now experimenting with how to generate revenues from it, not it just being a promotional tool. So, I mean I think at the end of the day they'll, they are all promotional and all revenue generating. It depends on where you point the camera, so to speak, and where you put the efforts into it. Uh, but ultimately us moving into the video game space and online space, all down the road is to generate profits from each of the centers of production, uh, but certainly from an overall point of view, uh, the brand. And that's where the value ultimately is for all of us. I mean, if you can own your brands and your library, that's where value is. Uh, and that's where you can also control your destiny a little bit more and not just be, let's say, a slave to work for hires. A work for hires is great because it allows you to build a team and uh, to build technologies uh, and whatnot and, and experiment with other people's ideas. And that's also really fun for the creative team but uh, yeah I mean it's it's the question we all have to ask I mean some you know us entering into this business I don't expect on our first game we're gonna make a lot of money on it uh, we'll probably we may even lose money but it's we can look at that and make that decision based on the overall uh, brand and, and how valuable it is to us and what kind of enhancement that does as opposed to just licensing it out and maybe not having a good game and maybe it will never have a second game because of it. Uh, we want our first game to be great. Uh, that will open up the opportunity for a second game uh, and a third, uh, and then other properties that we have to show that we can do it. So publishers have confidence in us and, and whoever else in the chain there is. It's not just publishers. I think things are changing. It's not you know, the direct-to-consumer uh, download space. Uh, there's so many different clients ultimately you have to deal with um, but everyone's after the same thing they want kids to love the property and if they do then there's a, there's always a way to uh, to finance it but uh, as with most things um, if you do it yourself 
and you're really committed to doing it and bringing in the right people, generally you can do a better job than someone else who takes your idea and does it uh, within the confines of what they have been experienced in. Maybe they have the perfect game platform for your property and then that's ideal if you find the right partner who is motivated to do it. But generally, uh, as in most things, if you can do it yourself and you dedicate the resources to properly do it, your incentive is much higher than a work for hire situation. So for us, we're you know, going through those growing pains of uh, how you do television production and the methodologies, um, getting into how you do it for video game. And actually, in the end, there's no magic to any of it. It's really about breaking it down into the details and the process that you need, the type of team, the type of talent, the type of creative talent. In every one of the businesses, there's, there needs to be a creative lead for the project. Um, and for us, our creative lead is the creator of the property. Often it's the CEO of our company, Ace Vipke, but it's not always him. We often work with out, outside creators, writers, uh, artists, it depends what it is. So in the video game space, it's a similar thing. It's getting the communication going between the game designer and the producer and the tech lead with our writers on the TV side. And it's been exciting to see those people come together um, and inspire each other and say, you know, it's not just about that character and his story or her story. It's about the entry point for the audience to get into the, those characters and how they might want to be those characters or be in that world because really for kids entertainment and for all of us entertainment is if you have a connection with the characters usually because you recognize that character somewhat is yourself and in the game space the character is the player so that relationship is really interesting and from a creative point of view it just opens the floodgates, in a sense. At the end, though, TV needs to be what TV is, an A story and a B story, three-act structure, 22-minute experience as, you know, you're watching it, uh, whereas a game is very different. So it's just finding those happy mediums of what is, uh, what is the way to produce for that and in the language that works for that uh, platform. And you know, games are evolving and changing, and I'm hoping that we will find ways to marry storytelling with fun games that not just tell stories, but engage the audience to enter the world that, that's been created maybe on another platform. I mean, our business model is quality before quantity. Uh, a lot of people in the television business have done multiple properties. You produce one show, then you go on to the next one, produce another show, and that's where the revenues are generated. Certainly, um, the majority of our revenue right now is from TV. Uh, but we've always felt that uh, managing a small amount of properties and really exploiting them well across all the places you can is, is the strategy to, to really focus on. So presently we're at about 135 people. Um, I'd say about 115, 20 of those are television production. Uh, and that's right from design and modeling to animation and visual effects and post. Uh, we have about 10 people in corporate and then we have about 15 to 20 in interactive, I would call it, between uh, online and uh, video game. And we're also working with outside um, development studios or outsourcers for certain elements as required. Um, and so in terms of managing it, it's really, that's about the ideal size for us. Producing one to two TV series a year. Right now, Stormhawks is, being, is our big one that's uh, just finishing production 52 half hours. Uh, and we're developing a DS game for that. And then League of Super Evil is our uh, next show, which is a really fun riff on a uh, parody almost of the whole action uh, hero genre, of evil um, villain hero genre. And that uh, is 26 half hours. So right now, over a five year span, those are the two properties we've really been focusing on. Star Stormhawks has a toy line, it has a uh, home video DVD, a comic book line coming out, a number of other licensed uh, merchandise in various territories around the world. So we've, the corporate side we've kept pretty small. Um, and so from a strategy point of view, we, we want to have a team that is very coordinated in terms of exploitation, execution. We work with partners, uh, licensing agents uh, around the world for the other categories. Uh, so we have about 15 agents. So it's really for us creating the property, creating the turnkey elements to then work with the right partners who have the size and leverage to get into retail, to get around the world uh, from a marketing and promotion point of view, and really kind of hand over the toolkit that they can then use and get their marketing muscle behind it. And, um, you know, so as an independent, you know, no debt, uh, not public, not going public, not looking to sell ourselves, 
If we create a few gray properties, um, it's a good life.